there's a second process of cell division that's modified for recombination of gametes. We call this type of cell division that relates to sexual life cycles meiosis. And you can see that chapter 13 of your textbook entirely covers this topic. In your lab exercise, you're going to be practicing looking at the stages of meiosis and also sketching them to make sure that you understand how it is that cells divide up their DNA in this special process because we need to have two cells, an egg cell and a sperm cell, that each contain only half of the DNA so that when recombination during fertilization, when egg cell and sperm cell come together, we end up with a new individual that has exactly the right amount of DNA for that species. On page 258 and 259 in your textbook, there's an excellent diagram with descriptions of each of the phases of cell division in meiosis. You'll notice it's divided into two parts, meiosis one and meiosis two. And by the end of the entire process, we have four daughter cells. Each of them contains half the genetic material ready to be recombined in fertilization to form a complete organism. Here's a plant that I introduced you to before when we were looking at photosynthesis for the lab class. And now what I'd like to do is draw your attention to this little structure here. What is the structure of the plant? Of course, it's a flower. What's the significance of the flower? Well, of course, the function of the flower is for sexual reproduction of the plant. Some plants have both male and female structures on their flowers. Some plants have flowers that are all male. Some plants have flowers that are all female. And some plants have individual flowers, which are only male. Other individual flowers on the same plant that are only female. But most plants do contain both male and female structures. And of course, many plants rely on insects to bring together the sperm, which is packaged into the pollen, and when that pollen lands on the female part of the plant, then the sperm can travel down to the ovary where the ovum is, the egg cell, and that's where fertilization occurs. Here we have a model of a flower. Remember that the flower is specialized to facilitate sexual reproduction. And so we have male parts to the flower that consist of the anther and the filament. We call that the stamen. Also, the female parts of the flower, the stigma, the style, and the ovary where the eggs are contained, and we call this the carpal. And then finally, there are accessory structures, including the petals, which may attract insect pollinators, bringing the sperm cells in the pollen to the sticky stigma, and the sperm will travel down the style to the ovary to fertilize the eggs inside. In lab, you'll be studying thin sections of the lily anther. The anther of the lily plant is the structure within the flower that produces the male gametes. And of course, it's going to produce those gametes through meiosis. So you'll be looking in the cross-section of the anther to look for those developing sperm cells.